Are you fed up of coming over the top in your golf swing, which loses you distance with both irons and driver and causes those really inconsistent strikes? In today's golf lesson video, we're going to help you understand how to stop swinging that golf club steep, stop those fats and thins with your iron shots and that awful slice off the tee with your driver. Instead, we're going to help you understand how to shallow the golf club, creating a more consistent, powerful golf swing, helping you lower your scores. Before I give you some secrets on how to transform your ball striking, if you're new to the channel, hello and welcome. If you're a returning viewer, hello again. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button. Hit the thumbs up as it helps the channel out and turn your bell on so you get notified of when I upload all my new videos. So what do I mean when I talk about coming over the top in a golf swing or swinging steep? Well, if you're someone who struggles with a slice or feels like you don't hit the golf ball as far as you should do, it goes really high, you don't get that penetrating ball flight, the patterns that generally I see with lessons and people that are coming in the studio is that there's an over the top sort of move. So your swing to the top of your golf swings, top of your back swings, and then the shaft will start to steepen this way. It gets you in all sorts of trouble. People then to try and hit the golf ball will start backing up this way, which causes those fats and thins. You start to release the golf club too early, adding loft to that golf club, hitting the golf ball high and losing that distance. So it's a real pattern with slices of the golf ball, people that aren't hitting the golf ball as far as they should be. It's this over the top motion causing all those problems. So how do we start shallowing the golf club out and getting that more penetrating ball flight and striking that golf ball a little bit more pure? I've got my hack motion wrist sensor on for this one and I'm gonna show you the difference between someone that swings steep and over the top compared to someone that might shallow the golf club and have that more penetrating, powerful ball flight. I'm gonna try and set up as similar as possible with the two shots. So hopefully the wrist angles and everything will be similar at the start of the two swings. And I'm gonna swing over the top and steep with the first one. Oh, I find it so hard to do that one because it's so unnatural. Now the more shallow penetrating ball flight. So try and get as close to the same wrist angles at the start of my swing with the two shots. And now the more powerful penetrating ball flight. Okay, so let's look at shot one first, a high wafty one to the right. Now, at address, I've got 28 degrees of extension. By the time I get to the top, I've added more extension up to 44 degrees. And by the time I get back to impact, I've taken some of that extension out, but I've still got 18 degrees worth of extension. Now, if we look at shot two, very close to the same setup, 30 degrees at address compared to 28. And then at the top, I've hardly added any more extension in to my lead wrist. So I've added three degrees, but by the time I get back to impact, instead of 18 degrees of extension, I'm almost most flat wristed and I've got six degrees of extension. So I've nearly taken all of my extension out in my golf swing. Now the difference between my lead wrist on those two shots, one that sliced and lost distance and that one that's got that penetrating powerful ball flight is only 12 degrees of extension at impact. That might not sound a lot, but watch this. Imagine this club is behind the golf ball and it's sitting nice and square. Now, if I take 12 degrees of extension out of my lead wrist here, and I go all the way down to here, look how much that's twist the club face. So it might not sound a lot, but imagine what that's gonna do to that ball flight. That's twisted loft off of my club. It's closed the face. It's gonna make me want to swing in a completely different way to find target. Twisting that loft off, closing that face, is going to give you that more powerful penetrating ball flight that's gonna get you that distance back on your golf shots. Now, there is another important part to this because yes, there's loads of talk online about flexion and extension. And yes, you can see how big a part that plays on the club face. And I said that that's now closed the face when I get rid of this extension. But if you think about it, 
If I start to go into a lot of flexion instead of extension, so I've gone really extreme, and I turn that club back to the ball, that face is still open. I have to make sure that I get my wrist down into owner again. So anyone that's struggling and thinking, oh, I'm doing that, I'm taking that extension out like Matt says, I'm still slicing it. You've got to add the second bit of the jigsaw in, which is getting rid of that radial, so basically the hinge in the backswing, and getting it back to owner, as well as taking that extension out in the downswing. Those combination of those two things is going to get you shallowing that club behind you rather than keeping it steep and on top of your hands, this head. Matchups, people, you've got to have matchups. So here's a couple of ways that you can start to feel the difference between the two. Now, I love to do just one-handed golf swings because this club gets pretty heavy when you've got it in one hand. Now, if you put it in your lead hand, swing to the top, which way does that club now wanna fall? Behind me. So that is now, getting my wrist to move into flexion. And now I just need to get it down into ulna and then swing through. The weight of this club is gonna get you the feeling that we're after. It's really hard once you're at the top of your swing to stand that club up like it's a lot of energy. Just let that club fall and see what happens to your wrist. It goes into, or it loses extension and it chucks that club away from you and gets that wrist into owner as well. Closing the face, de-lofting it, getting those powerful penetrating ball flights. The second one that I like to do, get yourself up against the wall, one that you don't mind your club running up against and do a step away from it, a nice big step. Get yourself up, set up into your golf posture and then swing to the top. Once you're at the top of that swing, I want you to find the wall with your golf club. And then I want you to run that club down the wall for as long as you can. And you'll see that your wrists, again, lose that extension as that club's running down the wall. And to keep it on the wall, you have to get your wrists moving towards that owner position. Then you can swing through, pretend you're gonna hit a shot, and it will completely change that feel of that downswing. Shallowing the club out, completely transforming that face to path relationship, completely changing that dynamic loft, allowing you to hit those penetrating, pure iron shots and powerful drives. Trust me, it's a game changer, but you have to have the matchup, not only working on moving this lead wrist from extension towards flexion. Mine doesn't actually go quite into flexion. I'm near it, but not quite into it, depending on what grip you start with, you might go into flexion and lots of you will. So you have to get your wrist, lead wrist moving in this direction. And instead of keeping this angle, you need to get it going into older with the flattening of that lead wrist. Combination of those two is gonna transform your ball striking. Those two drills, super simple, get the weight of the club and use the wall and you'll get those feelings spot on, I promise you. Let me know in the comments down below if you struggle with over the top steep shafts in your golf swings, slices. I'd love to know if these drills help and I hope that helps you understand why potentially you might be doing it. I also hope that the numbers at the start aren't too confusing and hack motion has helped you understand it even better. Let's start striking these irons as pure as possible and hitting those drivers as long and as straight as possible as well. Thanks all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.